This is what life is like for New York Giants head coach Tom Coughlin. A major difference from when he took over the reins at RIT 40 years ago. I came up to RIT. I had the interview with Lou. Um, he offered me the job. Uh, so starting a program over with all the details that are involved, you know, I did everything. I did the yeah. travel. I did the equipment buying. We did the everything you could think of with a, with a part-time staff. We yeah. had part-time coaches at the time, and I was the only full-time guy. But it was a great move for me. The coach also did the team's laundry and painted the yard markers on the field. But he admits his biggest challenge was filling the roster. <laughs> the challenges really were getting players. I mean, we were recruiting uh, players. You know, I can remember walking into a school, into a high school, and the coach would say, uh, do you want to sit down and look at film? And i say, film. All I want to do is know is who do you have that can qualify to get into a great school like RIT and who can play the game and wants to play at the exactly. college level. So I would go to six or seven schools uh, during the course of a day just trying to accumulate numbers. I'd stand out on the, on the walkway over from the dormitories and just look for for kids, I remember Bruce Kohout walking by and I grabbed Bruce, he was a nice looking big old guy, and asked him if he ever played you know, high school football and he said yes and so I talked him into, into coming out for the, for the varsity team. But there were a lot of guys like that. Now in your early years at RIT, how did that shape you as a, the coach you are today? Well I think that the shaping had come a little bit earlier when I played at Syracuse for Ben Schwartzwalder and how Coach Schwartzwalder ran his program. And, uh, I thought maybe this is something that I might want to do, and so I would start to think along those lines. And even as a player at Syracuse, I thought along those lines. And uh, so uh, the, the, the style just kind of came naturally because of the experiences that I had. At Syracuse, we were very physical. You know, we ran the ball, we played great defense, and we, we rushed and played from a 5-3 front, and uh, that's where the style began. During his four seasons at RIT, Coughlin didn't field a Division III powerhouse, but the Tigers held their own, going 16-15-1. I remember playing against great football teams. I mean, we played against the Hobart team that had the two leading rushers in Division III one time. We tied them. I was real proud of, of, the, uh, of the way in which our players rose from the club level to the varsity level against Alfred and Ithaca and St. Lawrence and Hobart and some really, Brockport, some really good uh, football teams, well manned, well coached, a lot of, a lot of uh, players, um, and our guys stood up very well against that competition. The sacrifices those kids made were, were amazing. You know, when you stop and think about the purity of the sport at that level, there was no one on scholarship. There was really no, no one on aid. Uh, uh, they were there because of the academics of the school and the opportunity to play, and of course the location. Tom Coughlin took great pride in building a varsity football program at RIT. However, decades later, the Super Bowl winning coach is still disappointed the Tigers program was disbanded. It's, it's disappointing because it is a historical uh, part of, of, the, of our past and uh, certainly would have liked to have seen the program continue. I know that it continued for a couple of years, um, similar to I guess what it happened in World War II. I think they had football at a time and then they had to drop it, but uh, it was disappointing. Um, I knew Lou Spiotti was the head football coach at the time when that happened, and uh, I know it, it had to be disappointing for Lou as well. Forty years after starting his coaching career, Coughlin is still at it. The 64-year-old coach is in his seventh season with the New York Giants. Plenty has changed in his profession, but the coach has remained the same and hopes to be remembered fondly when he calls it quits. Lastly, if you had to write the final chapter of your coaching career, how would it end and how would you like to be remembered? <laughs> well, it, I'd like to win uh, our, for our team, the New York Giants, to win another Super Bowl. That would be nice. Uh, but I would like to be remembered as a guy who was very thorough, uh, very detailed, uh, talked about team exclusively, not about individuals, but about the we rather than the me. Someone who cared about his players, uh, someone who could, uh, you know, who uh, learned as he grew in the, in, in the game, just as I think you grow in life in every capacity that you're in, adjusted his style, if you will, to the, uh, to the players and the circumstances of the day, and, uh, you know, and, and, and really got people to play to the best of their ability. That's the, the important thing is that we all, whatever we choose to do in life, that we do it to the best of our ability, and if we can do that, I think then, uh, then uh, it's something that's worthwhile remembering.